So here's a beautiful field of stars, and you might recognize Orion here. Let's pull up my pointer. Orion is uh, coming up earlier and earlier in our fall sky. Um, you can see the main four main stars, and usually it's kind of tilted on the horizon as it rises in the east. And this is the main stars of his body, kind of at his shoulders and kind of his knees, the bottom of his toga. And then, of course, the, um, the characteristic part of Orion, here's his belt, three beautiful stars, and here's his sword. So that is um, Orion. But in this chapter, we're switching gears. We've talked about our sun, and now we're going to talk about just stars in general. And just looking at this um, beautiful field of stars, we notice that stars have different colors. We also notice that stars are different brightnesses. And that's the first thing we're going to talk about is the different brightness of stars as we see them. So we see stars, different brightnesses, for actually two reasons. It, this, the how bright a star is as we see it depends both upon um, its distance to us, because the farther away a star is, the dimmer it's going to appear, and how much energy it's pumping out. Um, per second. We generally call its luminosity. So those two things will dictate what a star looks like to us in the nighttime sky. So luminosity is more is a, is a very important scientific sort of aspect of a star. The luminosity, as I said, is kind of how much energy the star is, is pumping out per second. You're probably familiar with, if you've looked on light bulbs, you know a 60 watt light bulb puts out more light per second than a 40 watt light bulb. Okay, and that's in fact we measure luminosity in white, and excuse me, we measure luminosity in watts. So then the apparent brightness, or simply brightness, we're going to refer to it, um, is then how much of that light ultimately gets to us. Um, so you can, and we'll talk about intuitively how this works mathematically, but the farther away we are from an object like a star that's shining light in all directions, then the less light that's going to get to us. So this is a kind of nice little visual thing. For instance, if we have a car with its headlights on and it's heading towards us, and let's say it's at a relatively far distance, maybe 30 meters away, that's we could have a light meter and we could actually have associated number with the luminous, or excuse me, I guess I should say, we could have a light meter that would measure the brightness or apparent brightness as the light gets to us. And as the car moves from 30 meters to 20 meters, of course, um, the light that we see increases. And as it's 10 meters away, the light that we receive increases still. So with decreasing distance, we're increasing brightness or apparent brightness. And we can kind of think of it this way, where if we have um, a star in here, oops, let's see, where's my other thing? Okay, here is our star in the center. Okay, and if we go out one astronomical unit, and we have a sphere, kind of a, a dark purple sphere, that's our one astronomical sphere um, encircling the, the star, and then if we, if we draw a sphere outside of that at two astronomical units, kind of our light purple, and then at three astronomical units, kind of our blue colored sphere. Notice that that kind of shaft of light indicated by a box here, by four boxes here, and by nine boxes here. It's the same shaft of light, and you can kind of see visually how we're getting this dilution of that one shaft of light as our sphere gets larger, right? So um, I don't know if you know, but the areas, area of a sphere at a particular radius from the, the middle of the sphere is 4 pi times that distance squared, or 4 pi r squared. So then, at any distance on a sphere, or yeah, any distance on a sphere um, away from the source, we can go ahead and get the um, apparent brightness from the luminosity like this. So luminosity is how much energy that object is pumping out. 
brightness is how we see it at our distance from that object. And to get the brightness, how we would should how bright we should see it, we can take its original luminosity and divide it by 4 pi times the distance between us and that object. All right. So um, we kind of have a neat relationship then. We don't have to visit a star to understand how much energy it's pumping out. So, for instance, then, we can get that important number, a star's luminosity, if we know the distance between us and the star, okay, we can, we would have to square that term, take it times 4 pi, and then we would multiply that number by the watts or the brightness as we see it. And then we would know the luminosity of how much energy that that star is pumping out. And, and, and luminosity of a star is, like I was saying, important scientific information we need to know.